I don't believe it. Look, look what happens when I fly away from this lovely area of diamond pines. My diamond blocks, they don't disappear anymore. Oh, maybe it's finally over. And this box tells me that it probably is. So trees restored, I had four diamond blocks left over. Which is actually quite funny because when I went to put the mini blocks in, I had four mini blocks left over. And I only found 34 pieces of concrete as opposed to 38. So I guess a few of these trees, the numbers on the books on the trunks are probably incorrect now. So we'll have a quick fly around in a little bit, find out where, what trees these four diamond blocks belong to. And we'll get them just back in there somewhere, I guess. That's absolutely fine. But something else you may have noticed is lots and lots of coloured wool everywhere. Look, there's even some right at the back there. We have been doing some planning. So in the last couple of streams, we've actually been doing some work over here and we have managed to get the main village centre of Sanley finished. There's, there's no more bits of wool over there. We, we actually replaced all the wool and we got in buildings, including this row of buildings here, this building here and some other bits and bobs and I absolutely love it. So let's take a quick look down here at what we've been up to. So we did show this briefly before, but we built this building here, which is going to be our leather shop. I haven't actually got the bit to put on there yet. I need to grab that from the from the dungeon over there, but it's fine. We've got plenty and we're going to stock that with leathery type goods. And here we're just going to use that as storage. I think we may have covered that an episode or two ago. However, around here, I wanted to have a go at doing a row of sort of terraced houses. Now, this is something I hadn't really tried before putting houses like this. They're the sort of the same style and next to each other and so on. But I watched a YouTube video by the amazing Blue Nerd, and it was his sort of 100,000 subscriber special, I think. And he did a, well, it was pretty much a 20 minute time lapse of him building an entire medieval city. And it is absolutely incredible. I do highly recommend you check it out. There's a link above. And that led me on to wanting to try and do these sort of terrace houses. So I watched the time lapse video. And then I tried to build roughly what he built just from memory, so there's probably some similarities, some differences to what was in that video, but it has actually taught me a lot about staggering houses and doing terrace houses and things like that, and I've learned lots of things I can apply to future builds. So I highly recommend you do that, it is how I learn to build, I watch people do things and build things, and then I try and build something similar without going back to the video, because that way you, you pick up a few things, the things that really stick out in your mind, but you still end up with your own build. So instead of just putting three houses here, I did figure it might be best to have another entrance to the town. So the middle one here, the ground floor, we've actually turned into a tunnel. And then what I did was I knocked through the wall at the top there to actually make that part there part of this building here. So we've got a bigger building and then a smaller building. And as usual, no interiors. So we, yeah, we might be looking in there. So this tunnel leads out and takes us to the area where the Jesse tree is. And we've got s'mores just over there. And then we've got lots of wool, as I said earlier. So I'm going to fly up in the air, we'll, we'll get up there and have a little look and I will show you, or at least walk you through, what the plans are in this area and what we're going to be doing today. From up here you can get a much better view of what it is we're actually planning. I mean clearly you can't see what buildings are going to be what, but at least you can see an idea of the rough layout. This will probably change over time as we start putting the buildings in. We're probably going to have new ideas and new things we want to try, but this at least gives us somewhere to start. So the basic plan, as we've already discussed over here, we're going to have a mill and some fields, but this side here, we were always going to put a building there. It's going to be a tall thin building. However, after hanging out with Stream and having a chat with them, we've actually decided that that is now going to be a brewery because that's going to tie in nicely with the mill the bridge across here we can use for moving the wheat and the grain and so on and I think we should just be able to tie that together all nicely around there. As we move down here closer to the town we're going to have a few smaller shops there like bakers and butchers and things like that and then we're going to have a marketplace because that's outside the walled part of the city but it's still fairly central to the overall build area so that should work quite well and it won't interfere with the Smalls Memorial or the greenhouse and Spruce Willis can stay exactly where he is which is marvellous because he's an absolute beast and I wouldn't fancy trying to move that one. As we carry on round we're going to have some residential buildings down here. I tried to put in a few angled buildings because I've not got much experience with those. I don't want everything looking square. So we're going to give that a go. Once again the layout down there is probably going to change quite heavily once we actually start the build but at least it tells us what we want to put there. And then we're going to have a tavern and a lighthouse along the coast with a little bit of, you know, gardens and trees and clifftop walks and things like that, which is all going to be nicey-nicey over there. 
We're then also going to put in a small shoreline down the bottom here. And because I just I can't help myself, I do it every single time. And that is, I'm going to have to put in a little smuggler's cave for the uh, for the tavern because. What's a tavern without a smuggler's cave, hey? Now you're all up to date, we can talk directly about what we're actually going to be doing in this episode. And it's something I've mentioned probably about three or four times in the last few episodes, and that is the mill. So we built the platform for this, I don't even know how many episodes ago, and I, I'm fed up of looking at it. It's it's just a big big stone platform, and it, yeah, it, it must go. And there's a sign here that says mill, so I guess we're going to have to put a mill in here. And then we're probably going to work on the fields and do a bit of terraforming around the area as well. And I don't really know what this is going to look like. I kind of want to put a water wheel on the side of it as well. That is why we put it down here by the river. And I've not really planned this. So what I'm probably going to do is grab some materials, start putting some stuff down, and we're going to figure out how this is going to look. I, I really don't know at this stage. Um, let's just see what we can do, shall we? I did it again. I messed up the time lapse. I really, I really need to, you know, check these things a bit more. But yeah, we've we've, we've lost about two hours of, of time lapse footage, which is a shame. It really is. But I suppose I might as well show you what we've got so far. And as you can see, I've done lots of work. So if we have a look from this side, we've even got a water wheel on. Don't think about it too much. Just pretend it's fine and it would work. And I've managed to do this side of the build. I've still got a few bits to do up here. I need to get some jungle logs in and some signs and buttons and things. I still need to texturize the roof. And of course, I still need to get everything blended in and get some more barriers up and so on and so on. So there's still plenty to do. And there's still plenty that we can, we can time lapse because I need to do all the fields out the front as well. So I think what I'm probably going to be doing is this side of the build, make sure that all this looks good so that it, well, you know, this side looks good, this side doesn't. We also need to put the balcony and the sort of back entrance and canopy and stuff out here. And then we're going to be putting all the fields in. So yeah, still lots to do. Right now, however, I'm a little bit annoyed at myself for messing that up again. So what we're actually going to do is head to Chunktown because rumour has it we have mail. Wow, and it looks like pretty much everybody has mail. So let's have a look. Where are we? There we are. Okay, so we have emergency meeting. Beacon problem. Beacon issue by Jesse B. Right, okay, cool. So it's definitely not just me. Jesse's having similar troubles. Dearest server mate, I'm writing this message because of recent events. I think it is of the utmost importance that we have a town meeting. Recently, I've discovered a massive corruption at my base around Beacon. At the rate of its going, I'd say addressing it now is in our best interest. Warmest regards, Jesse B. Well, I would I would have to concur with that, I think. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that needs to be addressed. Because that means it's not just me and the junk town. That means Jesse's having problems as well. So, I wonder if there are other people. Uh, right, so we should probably respond to Jesse's message, but to do that we're going to need something to respond with. There we go, so dearest Jesse, I too have been experiencing problems with my beacon of late. It appears to be morphing the land around it and growing something? I'm mildly concerned and believe we should indeed have a town meeting to discuss this before it gets out of hand. Please let me know where and when and I shall ensure I am in attendance. Warmest regards, Mr B. There we go, and what we'll do is just put this in Jesse's box, which is there. Beautiful. So hopefully, there we go, Bad Beacons by Mr. Beardstone. Hopefully we can actually figure out what's going on here and, uh, and try and get that sorted. Because, hmm, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem good. Does not seem good at all. Something else I want to do while I'm out this way is to solve a problem I've been having. That was that was really weird. I've, I've been having a problem over here in the shopping district. So a couple of times recently, I've, I've been over here, I've been doing my thing, you know, I've been working on my shops down here. And, well, as you probably all know, I've got absolutely terrible, oh, uh, well, taking off capabilities, but I've also got absolutely terrible ender chest management. And as a result, there's hardly ever any rockets in there. So I'm over here in the shopping district and I run out of rockets. And you think, oh, that's fine, that's fine. There's, there's two shops here that sell rockets. So I'll just go, I'll just go pick some of them up. Nope, no rockets. This has been empty for weeks. There's, there's just been no rockets in there whatsoever. So then you think, oh, it's okay. Jesse occasionally has a few rockets, just as, you know, a bit of backup in the shop over here. So you come over here and then you're like, obviously you don't fly over because you, you know, well, you haven't got any rockets. But you, you spend ages, you come all the way up here, you go in the box and boom. Once again, 
no rockets. So I've taken it upon myself to solve this problem temporarily until the actual rocket sellers get their act together and I've set up a temporary stall over here right by the portal and well we're gonna sell rockets. Boom. Lots and lots of rockets. And that's, that's, that's all this place is going to sell. It doesn't need to sell anything else. So we'll put another one of them up there. I've, I've got lots and lots of rocket stock on me because I have obviously got my creeper farm. And I've got my sugarcane farm. So I have lots of rockets all the time. I just, I just don't have them over here when I need them. So, yep, this should solve the problem. So I'm going to quickly fill up these barrels. We've just popped up this market stall. It's nothing fancy, but it should do the job. So another five shulkers of rockets. So all nine of these barrels are going to be rammed full of rockets. And once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not going to undercut anyone. I'm going to sell them at exactly the same price as everybody else because I'm not here to undercut the market. I'm, I'm just here to actually make sure that there is a market. Okay, all the boxes are full. We should also put an ender chest in here because what's a shop without an ender chest after all? And maybe we can just put a couple of finishing bits in here. In fact, those rockets there are excess ones. So, and so are they. So those two boxes I'm probably going to keep in my own ender chest just so I do actually have a supply over here. I need a couple of these bits. There we go. So, uh, that one and that one can go straight into my ender chests because it's going to be see what i mean this look most of these are look i've got what what kind of what kind of ender chest is this i've just got potions milk and lava this is no way to play minecraft and there we go we've kept it nice and simple we've called it yay rockets because well yay rockets and boom i think we're done so yep they're just three stacks for a diamond we've got nine barrels there once they're gone they are gone i mean we may restock at some point it kind of depends if they get their act together or not because if they do you know i don't want to muscle in on their market i just want to make sure that they're actually available mainly for myself but also of course for other people and i could probably get away with boop hang them on there just so you see that when you come out of the portal and i think yep i think we're pretty much covered Last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of foliage just to fill up some of these gaps and holes and things. It'd probably help if I use the same leaf type. So we're just going to make this look a little bit nicer around here. And then I think we can call this done and just back off and, uh, well, see if we actually make any diamonds off of this. I mean, is it only me having this problem? Has everyone else actually sorted out their ender chests and done the thing that people should do? And Is that why there's no more rockets in the shopping district? Are people literally just not in need of them? I, I don't know. Worst case scenario, I can use this as my personal rocket storage for over in the shopping district. Marvellous. With that problem sorted, I think I am feeling refreshed and ready to go back to our base and carry on with the mill. And this time, hopefully we're going to have a time lapse. So if you can hear music now, then that means the time lapse probably worked. Yay! If you can't hear music, then I guess we're about to cut to a finished mill.
I actually stopped and checked this time and we did get the time lapse which I'm very happy about and we are finished on the outside at least anyway so what I've done here is put in a big cornfield and just fallen off a roof and I've put in a few paths that go around I've linked up all the paths that go around here and connect around the side as well managed to get all the back sorted out here and this area here where I did have the sort of balcony type bit I decided just to put in some stairs in the end that go straight into the back door because it was taking up a little bit too much space and I think with the other square balcony on that side it was looking a little bit too square but now I think it's looking much better so if we go down here for a closer look the views are looking much better and we can just go through the gates here we can run through the fields and yeah I, I really like all the way these small details have come together so obviously I need to get rid of this mess from when I was building and then sort out this little corner but even just the muddy path down the side because it's only a small path I've got a couple of bits of stone but it's mainly just you know mud pods all dirt and a couple of mushrooms and as you go around the side here I've decided to leave this rock formation in there and if you go around this side we also put in a cute little bridge to actually link up these areas and for the first time in a very long time well in fact since I since I put the river in for the first time we can actually cross it now which is lovely I'm liking the look on this side as well I think the water wheel does work despite the fact that if you do really sort of you know look at it it hasn't even got the sluice bridge thing but it's fine I think it you know gives the impression it's an artistic impression it's fine it's my build I like it so whatever in saying that though the inside um yeah we're gonna we're gonna do something we don't usually do and I think we're, we're gonna do the inside of the building on the same day and in the same episode that we did the outside. I know, I know, I know. It's unusual and it's, it's you know, it might feel a bit weird as we do this, but I think it'll be nice to actually have this build completely finished because I've been doing a little bit of research, just, just a little bit, not too much, don't worry. And I've got an idea of how these sort of water mills and grain grindy things work. And this pole is gonna play a key part in that. So I'm going to have a little play around, see if I can actually get the mechanism or at least a version of the mechanism in here. And the grain itself would actually be ground up here, which means we also need a way to feed the grain in. So we're probably going to put something up here. We need to obviously cover up the inside of the roof anyway, because those lights are there purely to make the roof lighter, not to actually do anything useful on the inside. So I'm going to make a little bit of a start on this machinery here. And I will bring you guys back once I've got something worthy of actually looking at. And I think the main thing I'm probably going to need is um, some of these. So we can carry on the, the water wheel this way. That makes sense. Yep. And then let me just put some of these in for a cog. And, and then we're going to need other cogs. Um, yeah, we'll f I'm going to figure this out. And I'll meet you back here once um, once I have any kind of clue what it is I'm actually doing. We're making some progress in here, but we still have a way to go. And I've got the sort of grinding system in. So essentially the water wheel turns outside, which spins this, which will turn the cogs, which turns this cog in a horizontal fashion. And that rotates this whole section here. And the idea is that that then turns a grindstone, which is in there. And it, it, it spins round and round and that's where it grinds the grain in there somewhere. And what I need to do is actually have a sort of feed system so the grain can actually get in so I think what I need to do is probably put another floor in at about this level I think that's probably gonna work quite well for us and then have a system that just looks like it's feeding the grain down into the actual grinding mechanism so I'm gonna crack on with that bit next I think um, and yeah we'll see how we get on but I do also need to sort out the rest down here as well because there's quite a lot of space around. I don't like how much space there is. So I'm probably going to be playing around with some mini blocks and things like that. See if I can do something that's quite cool down here and makes it a bit more interesting. And I think it would make sense to also get some uh, some hay bales and things like that as well. Which is probably what I'm going to put more over that side maybe. I don't really know. But uh, yeah, first things first. Let's get this ceiling in and try and get a feed system sorted as well. Okay, there we go. So I've got a feeding system for the grain at the back of the grinder. And the last few things to do pretty much revolve around smaller decorations. So I need to get some decent lights up in here so we can probably hang a few in the corners and things like that maybe and I also just want to get some general sort of decoration -y bits up here so we're gonna grab a few more barrels we're gonna grab some other bits and bobs and try and make this look a little bit more homely I suppose even though it's not a home but you know what I mean 
I absolutely love mini blocks. They make such a difference to an interior. I don't know why I keep avoiding interiors. Maybe I was just avoiding them until the mini blocks were added. I don't know, but I love them. So down here, I've just added a few bits and bobs here in the corner and just little, little stools to sit on and all sorts just with the mini blocks. I've used like pistons for different tables and things like that. I've just tried to mix up some blocks in here just to get a bit of color. And upstairs, what I've done is look, Look, this is another reason why I love mini blocks. That's a mini block that I've made full size, but we can put it at an angle so we can really mix up what's going on up here. And same here with the mini scaffolding blocks. I don't even know what they're supposed to be, but I like them almost like SIDS, maybe. I don't really know, but I like them. They're cool and they work. It gets even cooler when we go outside, though, because if we go through here, we also had mini hay bale blocks, which we can, we can do things like this with them. And it just brings it to life so much more because everything's not so together you know like just just ah oh, oh i love it i love it absolutely love it so i've been going around and just adding little details here and there and i think i can safely say that this build is now complete i've got it all lit up i shouldn't have any problems i mean i might do might do around that area there but uh everywhere else is looking good and yeah absolutely love this build so I hope you love it too. I mean, it's it's a shame that we lost the first half of the time lapse, but I think we more than made up for it with the second half and getting everything else done. And I'm pretty sure I just saw a creeper over there. So I'm going to back away and I'm going to go to bed. So with the completion of that build, it is actually now possible to come into Sanderley, arrive by boat, get off at the dock, and you can actually run all the way through the town via a few different routes actually to be honest there's a few buildings you can go around there's other exits from this main wall town you can go to and everything that you look at apart from the side of the cliff which we'll get to is 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 done it's looking good we've terraformed the whole area we've got multiple paths to go in different directions that will take us off to the portal this bit will take us up to the top which is also done and this takes us around by the mill and we can actually run all the way through into the big cave now in fully formed areas which makes me very very happy I've been wanting to do this for a long time the view as you fly in from the portal as well is looking awesome and once we get those buildings in on this side here that's going to be a really nice flight path just flying down the river going past the mill and all the buildings and yeah this is this is really helping to pull the area together and I'm very excited about what we'll be doing next which I, I don't know I mean I feel like the brewery is going to have to go in because that's just a big red blotch on the map now isn't it can't be having that but that's gonna have to wait for another episode as i'm afraid that's all we have time for today but if you have enjoyed it please do leave a like and if you are a first time visitor then please do drop a subscribe as well to make sure you never miss another episode if you enjoyed it of course if you didn't enjoy it then um well sorry about that why did you say to the end i'll see you all on the next episode of truly bedrock bye bye now